welcome to Snow Labs. Uh, what we're going to do today is take you on a little tour of some things I first learned uh, in the free energy movement. And uh, of course there's no such thing, you know, there's no such thing as over unity and uh, a lot of these academic nerds, you know, they don't want to believe in it. They don't, uh, they don't believe that it is possible to actually draw energy out of the vacuum. So it's something that they need to study a little bit more. And I'm going to show you, I can't tell you all my secrets, but I'm going to show you some as a Christmas present. And uh, earlier when I first began studying things like the Bedini motor, the EV Gray motor, uh, I learned a lot. And so I'm going to show you a couple tricks, things that you can do to enhance your own uh, experiments and power production. And uh, I have plenty of other tricks up my sleeve and things that uh, I keep you know, for my own greed, but uh, we can we can give away some too. So Merry Christmas to the free energy movement, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy and uh, learn from me as much of a, as much as I've learned from you. And uh, Happy New Year! Now this is an old ceiling fan. Uh, here you can see eight new didium magnets. These are uh, no, what were they? N52 grade. And uh, the reason I chose a ceiling fan is because you can use it as a, a starter also. But I actually, in hindsight, I don't like it because you have the uh, metal. You know, this metal uh, conducts the magnetism away. And so what will happen is the magnetic field will conduct through the metal here and come out here. So you're losing so much of that magnetic force. It's, it's no longer lensed when you put it on a metal unit like this. Now if you notice, I have one magnet here and one magnet here. And that's because I'm taking a U-shaped coil like that. Uh, let's photograph that again. This is a U-shaped coil, uh, which actually should reach around from top to bottom. But here I have them going from top to side. And uh, this is a very small coil. It should be a lot larger. And uh, ideally, you want your now what you want here is you want your coil to be as close as possible to the neomagnet. You're with about one millimeter separation. So you have to do some really tight machining. Also, see here I have these uh, round-headed screws. Those are no good because uh, they block your clearance and they take up a lot of the field. Air is like a resistor to magnetic flux. So the less air and the, the tighter your gap, the better. Uh, over here, you see how it rotates through. So as you, this is just a, a rotor. Now the bearing, the reason I like ceiling fans too, is the bearing is just a, a very beautiful spinner. But uh, that would just take the shaft and the bearing out of here and, and uh, change the rotor and uh, fabricate one. Now, over here, I just have uh, some turns of wire. I forget how many turns are in my notes somewhere. A uh, bifiler coil. I'm using a steel uh, punch as a core, packed with some nails to keep it tight. And then the, over here, it's got uh, nails in there, kind of wedging it in around the, the metal. And I don't know, it's just a Radio Shack spindle. So there's not a whole lot of wire, not a whole lot of force, but you see how large that gap is? And that will spin it, but it's no good. Now over here, I was just using an old automotive relay to use the pulse magnetic motor, so you can almost hear it ticking. And if you look at it real close, what happens is it opens, as this is kind of hard to see, but the points will open and close as the magnet passes over. And so I was using that as a switch. The uh, problem with that, read switches or relays, is the spark. And you can reduce that spark quite a bit by putting a capacitor across, like Doug Combs and does. But the thing is, is you're still eroding the electrode. So I prefer a, a transistor and MOSFET, MOSFET kind of assembly, but a real high capacity transistor. And, uh, as far as the breadboarding, it's just real simple stuff. I don't have anything uh, as far as a flip-flop circuit going right now on this thing. So I'm just testing some basic concepts and some ways of improving on the Bedini-type motor. And uh, so it's a general layout of things. This is a much more powerful setup when you pump it. The other thing you want to do is you want to pump it with uh, high voltage and as many amps as possible so you get 
the live strength out of your coil. You need a much better coil than this. And you want to clamp them around. They're you know, really tight around the, the magnet. So, and you want to keep all your magnetic force in there. So that, in a nutshell, is my modified Bedini motor and the first proof of concept unit that needs a great deal of modification to make it better. And uh, it's so primitive, it would actually cost a lot to build it up at that size, and I don't like it. So I tore it down. It would have been about 50 watts, and it uh, needs to be better. So there's not really any point spending the money to build that one up. Uh, what it should be, what I should do is tear off that rotor and put on a new rotor shaft, and then we can build a nice one. But I would not use the, I would use N52 magnets if doing it again, but I would not use the N52 ring magnet there uh, in that style. It's a good, it's about, uh, I forget if it's 3600 or 5900 gauss. It's been a while, but it's, it's a lot of strength to this thing. These, these ring magnets, but you lose that magnetic uh, field strength. The gauss is lost to all this metal and the whole unit. So you don't you don't want that. You want to preserve the force by running it through plastic. Something non-metallic, uh, aluminum or rotor shaft would be good. I mean, aluminum rotor disc and smaller type magnets too. The face, the wide face, is very good. But you want to have uh, you want to have that laid into a very thin disc. I'd say about an eighth of an inch if you're doing a, a type of unit off one of these things. And higher RPM, the better. More amp flow going in, the better. Higher voltage, the better. Two flip-flop batteries in a circuit, and that's your basic uh, modified Bedini. Uh, it's the, the core is the true magic that goes on in these things and so what you need is a, a really good bifiler coil but tight like in the EV gray motors where you have uh, very very tight clearances between the magnet and the you know the magnet and the coil okay bye bye Okay, and just a couple more supplemental notes here on uh, this motor. Uh, first one is on the core here, the core for the coil. Uh, here I use uh, soft iron, and that's uh, you know, just a regular steel and a punch. The type of core you use is, is a really big factor on these things. And some people use the steel welding rods, things like that. That's all right. But, uh, one of the... At least for the most bang for the buck that you'll get is out of uh, silicon steel, uh, typically used in electric motors and things like that. Here's a, an example of good silicon steel. And this is the rotor inside of a ceiling fan. Here you have your, your nice coils there, but they're actually very low torque. And that's another factor on these motors. Yeah, if you look at the magnets, uh, the typical Bedini motor layout where you have eight magnets in this type of configuration it's not set up for torque so what happens is you know here's your drive coil and your feed coil now this one coil will sustain its operation here on on this thing when you're pumping in about uh, 18 volts and then i'm sorry 18 hang on a second typical makita battery which i forget the specs on i'll tell you in a minute here now uh on a typical Here's one of my drive batteries that I was using as a, a first test. This is an old, very old Makita 9.6 volt battery, uh, 1.3 amp hours. And I believe, I have to check my notes, but it was about 1, one to 2 amps, I think, was the flow. But anyway, very low voltage and very low amps will on that thing will drive this thing to about 1,200 RPM. And that's about it. That's the most you can get out of this thing at those dimensions and, you know, tolerances for everything. Excuse me, dimensions. Um, now, here's the other thing I wanted to point out 